You better hold that just a minute, Wilson. And then when we're done, I'll go ahead and do a real quick stand up from this start. When we're finished, he's okay. I'll be all right on four here. Okay. John's your name, John, isn't it? John, 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 yeah. John Tibbet. Sure, yeah. wow. uh, second cousin, I believe, to Lawrence Tibbet, who dropped yeah, the yeah, S yes. from the name. Too many S's in the name. Uh -huh. Lawrence Tibbets. Tibbets. <laughs> Suppose this is going to represent now people coming to talk to you that either you haven't heard Are from in a long time. I don't know. We're just, they're just photographing <laughs> right. the two of us. Either that you haven't heard from a long time or maybe new fans. Uh, I should think my old friends, I would think. Yeah. But the new people, the young people now, they may be hearing, Buddy Rogers, who's he? And they're going to be starting to check it out, don't you think? Well, they've been saying, who, Buddy Rogers, who, 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 who's he? <laughs> for a long time. So this is such a thrill for me to, to, to have this. It just, I really, truly don't deserve it. I, 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 I'm not going to give it up, but I don't see how in the world I ever received this award. I mean that sincerely, John. And there's going to be a special place on the mantle already prepared? Yes, right next to Mary's two Oscars. So we'll have three in this house. Is that more oh, Oscars? Good, <laughs> good, good, good enough. It's good balance, isn't it? <laughs> it used to break my heart when uh, I'd hear that Oscar winners use their Oscar for a, a door stoop. Yeah. Oh, that broke my heart. Now, I used to know Miss... I keep doing this. I don't yeah. need to. I used oh, yeah. to I used to know uh, Mrs. Steiner, Max Steiner's widow. Yes. And we were over there and saw Max's Oscars. And that, it gave you kind of a chill. Uh, and the original scores for Gone with the Wind and some of those, you know, to hold those. Don't, don't forget, who was the... Uh... Pardon? Pardon? He's had 11 nominations. He's never received it all. He's getting one this oh. year. Uh, oh, uh, uh, somebody's... Oh, Spielberg? Spielberg has... No, no. The, the movie has 11 nominations. No. no. Now, Houston is up, but I think yes. he's won before. Oh, yeah. this, is, this is a choreographer, someone I read in the paper, that oh. he's, he's been nominated 11, 10 or 11 times. They're I, giving him one. Thank I know God. Geraldine Page has been nominated, yes. I think, 12. Yes. So that might, this might just be yeah. it for her. Yeah, and her, her new film, Trip to Bountiful, is really nice. I hear that's beautiful. Have you had a chance to get down to the Academy now and see a lot of the... Uh, you know, I, I've been so busy with this uh, mm -hmm. re reborn. <laughs> 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 I've had more friends writing and calling me and uh, newspapers and clippings and television, and, and it's, uh, it's, 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 it's just great. You're going to have to hire a full-time secretary <laughs> now just to keep track of all yeah. of this, huh? Better for that. In fact, I thought we might get into a little bit of uh, um, how many Oscars that you, no, not how many Oscars, but how many years now you have been actively involved in the humanitarian concerns. Are we ready now to go into the interview itself proper? Okay, fine. Well, let's just go back to the beginning. Yes. Buddy yes, Rogers. Sir. Buddy. Buddy. Where does the buddy what come from? What happened to Buddy? Charles. Why am I not calling you Chuck? My name is Charles, Charles Edward. Hmm? Mother must have been in love with the kings of England. She named me Charles and Edward. That didn't work. My sister <laughs> called me Buddy. And I remember when I first came to Paramount, they put big signs up. Anyone would be fined if they call Charles Rogers Buddy. They were trying to get rid of Buddy, Buddy, Buddy. They thought, and I thought, that Buddy was good for a cat or a dog or a pony or something, but it wasn't for movies. Yeah. But I couldn't lose it. And you grew up the son of a judge. That's right. Does that mean kind of a strict upbringing? I had a beautiful upbringing. I don't know whether you'd call it strict. It yeah. was a typical American, a typical... Methodist, the typical little school, the high school, the grammar school, the college, right through, right. I had many boys and girls in Olathe, Kansas, that I went to kindergarten with and right through the University of Kansas. Mm -hmm. Take us to those times as a young collegian, a musician over there at KU. Yes. I made uh, $10 on Friday night and $15 on Saturday night with my little jazz band, my five-piece combination. I had a Model T, fur, Model T Ford and a her coat and I had uh, some girls and um, <laughs> and a lot of musical instruments. Yes. Did you learn to play those because you were talented for all of them, or was it necessity speaking? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Really, I, I I knew I knew that I wanted to be in music all my life as a little boy, ten or twelve years of age, and I joined Mr. Ott's band as we sent away for. I think he asked my father for fifteen or twenty dollars to send away for an instrument. Now, we didn't know what instrument we were going to get, whether it's a tuba or a bass drum or a clarinet or a flute. You had to take what he I sent see. for. <laughs> My baritone came one day, and I saw this great big package, and I pulled it out, and it was a three-valve three baritone. And I couldn't use that in college. I couldn't work my way through college, so I traded that for a, a 
ra da 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 do do slide trombone. And so I, in college, I played the drums and then the trombone at the same time. That was on $10 night. <laughs> Necessity was the mother of invention. You had to learn to play. That's right. Yeah. Now, how long were you at KU before suddenly that call came from I Paramount? had three years up, up on the hill, and uh, I had a letter from Dad. We wrote letters in those days, although Lawrence was just about, what, 20 miles away from Olathe. Mm -hmm. And Dad says, Mr. Andrews, who owns the theater in Olathe, came by. And he said, they're looking for 10 boys and 10 girls from throughout all the colleges in the United States for a first school of acting. And Dad said, uh, buddy, why don't you try it? I answered Dad's letter. said, there are too many football and basketball players in my fraternity house, the Phi Kappa Psi house. So I said, no, 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 Dad. I had another letter from Dad. Dad says, son, tears in there. You've never failed me. You've never failed me. Do it for me. And I did it for Dad. Never, never thought I'd receive a call from Paramount. And about nine or ten days later, they invited me to come back to New York, to the School of Acting. Now, in these days, sound had not yet you arrived. See, they were teaching us how to act mm -hmm. without a voice. Right. We had no idea that we'd ever have to use a voice. We uh, would learn how to use the eyes and the gestures, and, and uh, oh, they taught us how to hold a kiss three minutes without laughing. That was so important. And there you were, a musician <laughs> without sound. <laughs> They were teaching us how to roll down the stairs without hurting themselves. They taught us everything but how to act. Now, when did you get the news that from New York? Yeah, when I graduated from Fairmont School, yeah. Mr. Lasky called me in and said, Buddy, uh, we've decided to get you uniforms. You're going to be in Beaugest. You're going to play Ronald Coleman's young brother in Beaugest, a French Foreign Legion costume. And they sent me to this costuming company with the boots and the thing. And they said, we're going to send you to California. That's four days and four nights on the train. I said, fine, here we go. But I said, can I stop in Olathe just to see my family? They said, well, take a day or two there. Tom, I, I was a French Foreign Legion boy with uniform for two days up and down the main street. <laughs> Must have been a bit conspicuous, I, huh? I got on out to Hollywood. They met me at the station. They said, welcome to California, buddy, but you're not going to be in Beaujet. <laughs> I said, I'm going back to Olathe tomorrow because in Olathe, if a man says you're going to do it, uh, his word was his handshake. And Mr. Lasky said, buddy, wait a minute. We're going to put you up for old Ironsides. It was a big, you're going to make a test for Ironsides. I made the test. Charles Farrell got the part. So I really was so discouraged that I said, truly, I'm going back to Olathe. And he said, Billy Wellman's going to make a picture called Wings. Will you have lunch with him tomorrow? I said, sure. That's how it started. And in the meantime, somewhere along in there, after the film's released, the song Buddy becomes a hit, although it had already been written, correct? You see... Let's follow the my chronology. Buddy, no, no, wait a minute. My, my buddy. buddy. My okay. Buddy was written for the young soldier boy in World War I. Right, okay. And uh, I was certainly too young to be in that World War. Mm -hmm. But so that was written, so... I, I've had a song or two written for me. I've... On the films, I think I remember doing... Uh, it's only a paper moon. dee -de 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 da 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 That was one of my songs. And, Oh, many of them over That's, the years. Sometime along the line, though, somebody stuck my buddy to you. Do you That's remember right. how that happened? No, sir. Yeah, it just happened. It just happened. And it's never stopped since. No, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and there you are, up in the air in wings, no faking. We had, to, we had to learn to fly. Richard Arlen had flown in the Canadian Air Force in that war, first war. And I hadn't, of course. I'd been up in an airplane at, out at Olathe, a $5 ride for five minutes. That was all. <laughs> so we went to Kelly Field, San Antonio, Texas. And they said, buddy, I want you to meet this young lieutenant, Van. I said, hello, Van. He's going to teach you how to fly, and which he did. Van and I, we were there about a month at Kelly Field. And uh, I'd get up in the front seat, and Van would get in the back seat, and we'd get up, and I'd shake the stick, and then he'd have to hide, and, and I'd press the button until I learned to fly. And then we had the cowling, and then we had to wait for the clouds, because if we would start one sequence with a certain cloud, we didn't have the back effects. We didn't have, we had to fly. And we had to find our clouds. We'd go out <laughs> to Kelly Field every morning. Oh, please, we're begging for clouds. And somebody would telephone, clouds 22 miles from, we'll be there. <laughs> and we'd get in our little plane and go find the clouds. Now, Me this van turned out to be Hoyt S. Vandenberg, our commander in chief. That was my instructor, the tops. <laughs> You were apparently receiving some lessons in life as well. You were flying high even on the ground in the scene in which you have to get drunk. Yeah, Billy Wellman double-crossed <laughs> me on that. I had, I'd never 
had a strong drink or at that time, and uh, he said it was a uh, buzzy water, wasn't anything, but he kept giving it to me, and I kept enjoying it. I think that's the first time I ever took <laughs> that much to drink, and it was for the film, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> and with companionship like Clara Bow, who could resist? She was the it girl, and boy, she was it too. <laughs> you know that darling little girl. She was wonderful to work with, and. When Eleanor Glenn called her the it girl of America, the world, or whatever it was, that seemed, as I look back, that seemed to change her whole life. She became on it. And, on. She, mm -hmm. and she just ruined her life just being it. She was on, 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 on all the time. And her frame and her body and her constitution just yeah. couldn't take being an it girl 24 hours a day. Buddy, during these years, young blooming star here in Hollywood, Take us on a tour through a typical night out on the town. Were you quite the young buck in those days? I went to the Hearst Ranch, and I went to the San Simeon. Uh, that was interesting to go to Mr. Hearst San Simeon. Mm -hmm. We'd go to Glendale and meet about 15 or 20 of our friends, stars and who what. And Mr. Hearst's private train would come into Glendale there, and we'd all board it, 20 or 30 of us. And I think it was about the five-hour private train trip to San, to San Clemente, or San... San Simeon. San Simeon. And we'd stay all night on the train, and 7 o'clock in the morning, all these big Cadillac 16s would be lined up. We'd go up in the hills, up to the palace. It was a thrill. There were times where you must have yeah. pinched yourself, saying, how did I get here? I know, from Olathe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, the sweetest thing, when Mother went to heaven and left me, just before that, she said, honey, I've got to tell you one thing. She said... You should have stayed in Olathe. You'd been happier, healthier, wealthier. You'd been much better if you'd never gone to Hollywood and stayed in Olathe. And maybe she's right. But you wouldn't have met Mary. Ah, that's right. Comes 1927, my best girl. I'd finished Wings. Hope Loring had done some of the writing on Wings. This woman writer, famous writer. And she said to me one day, Buddy, what, uh, what are you going to do next Monday right after lunch? I said, no. She said, meet me in front of Paramount. I want to take you someplace. I said, fine. I met her, we drove to another studio. We drove in this big studio, and we drove up to a big bungalow there. And she said, buddy, go ring the, the, the doorbell there, I'll just park the car. And I went and I pushed the buzzer and the door opened and Mary Pickford arrived at the door. I had no idea, of course I knew who she was, of course. She's the most popular name in, of anyone in the world in right. those years. And it seems as though I was there in order to see if Mary might want to test me for her leading man. And the next week, I made the test. I'm up in the dressing room, and I see three other young men make that test ahead of me. I knew, I knew that I wouldn't have a chance. I was that frightened. They finished, they called me, and Mary met me. Come on, come on, buddy, come on, I'm going to, I want you to. She wanted me to win that role. I, it was amazing. She helped me. She put her little face up against mine, and all of a sudden, she was helping me make this test. And it seemed like, as I look back, she wanted me to win that part. Yeah. And, and, I did. and you won and her. I did. <laughs> Not many people marry a dream. She must have seemed like a dream to you at times. She was an amazing woman. You see, she was financing, she was the manager and the president of her company and, and all that, and yet on the set, never one word, never she would know, not criticize anyone. She was, yes, sir, yes, of course. Of course, at lunch, I suppose she could tell the other people what. She would like to change what she would like, but she was marvelous to work with. Marvelous. Take us to those years in Pickfair. Now, she retired from the screen in 33. You were continuing to make films, but yet you'd have really, really devoted more of your time to off-screen activities, did you not, by the mid to late 30s? It seems though I, you know, I was so interested in, in the music. Mm -hmm. I'd have my horns on the set, and I was playing them all the time, and, and I'd make a movie, and I'd get a kind of a bad review, and I'd say, oh, oh. I'll get a band, I'll get a band. <laughs> <laughs> Always the band. And I did that. Rudy Valley says, buddy, get a band, so I got my band. And it was thrilling. The one-nighters in the theaters with the band. Then I'd get a script, call for a movie. I'd make a movie and then go back to band. Band, movie. But made movies in England, made movies all over. But uh, it was a beautiful life. It was a great, great life. I've always wondered if I'd stayed on and not gone with a band all over the country in the theaters, if I'd improved and been better off, I wonder if I could learn to act. I'll always want to think. Hmm. 
I wonder if I could have done any better. In the meantime, you're living in a, a way of life that most of us can only dream about. You are almost on top of the world out here. And I guess you have carried a part of that world here now to your new home. You have kept Mary, it here, haven't you? When Mary was a little bit ill the last year, I said, darling, I don't want to stay in Pickfair if, if you leave me. And she said, well, why don't you take part of this property? We had acres and acres at that time. And I said, I'd rather do that. And so we designed a small house, this house that you're in right now. And Mary helped me on this and this and I did before she went on to heaven. So she knew where I was going to be. And I'm amazed and delighted to see a piece of Olathe here, too. <laughs> yes. Tell us about that. I'd heard about this post office that was out in front of the <laughs> grain store in Olathe. And through friends of a friends of friends, I was able to, to, to buy that post office. And this post office would be rolled out in front of the grain store. And you've seen it, the size of it. And it has about 50 or 75 little boxes. And the farmers would ride up on their horse or in their buggies and get their mail and post their mail. And then at nighttime, the post office would be rolled back into the store. In a way, you've kept Olathe with you, too, in that you've helped endow and support theater. That must be a particular source of satisfaction to you to know that bearing your name in Olathe is a theater where productions go on at this moment. I'm quite involved in it. I hear from them all the time, and I encourage them. I go back for the Buddy Awards, and uh, it's thrilling to have that. However, I, there were only 2,000 people in Olathe when I was a young boy in high school. Now, I must be awfully near and say there are around 50,000 people. Kansas City moved right into Olathe. So I don't know. My father, who was editor of the newspaper, dad knew the names of every person in Johnson County and the children, their first names. I don't know whether they could do that today or not. That goes with the territory. To be a good editor, you have to be able to do yeah. that. In fact, so many people now in Olathe, Kansas City, those areas are looking at you right now, waiting for the Oscars. I guess you hope they'll be watching that night, huh? I certainly do. I don't, can't realize, I still can't realize why they selected me, but I'm not going to fight it. Would you like to look right into that lens and invite all your friends to be watching that night? Please. I'll be so happy because I'm going to be so thrilled receiving that award. And I want to share it with you, with you all. In Olathe, Johnson County, Kansas City, Overland Park, Lenexa, <laughs> Wellsville, Gardner, Michigan. <laughs> Good. One last thing about those humanitarian activities. We don't often know enough about how it is that people help other people in show business. But yet through Variety Club and so many other activities, actors, people in this industry, they know how to help each other out, don't they? Tell us what you have done over the years. <laughs> let's, put it, uh, let's put that another way. What have been some of the activities that you have been involved with? Well, Mary and I became involved in uh, the Motion Picture Home. She was one of the founders of it. And we've stayed with that all these years. And Mary was always involved with the Jewish Home for the Aged. I've kept up everything that Mary ever started to do, and I've been able to follow through with everything that she's ever wanted mm -hmm. to be associated with. And that's the USO, that's the Red Cross, that's the Salvation Army, that's the University of Kansas, that's UCLA, that's USC, that's... It's named after Gene Herschelt. And it's very interesting. I'm going to tell this, Tom, that I hope Gene Herschelt is happy with this, with this selection because he played my father in Avery's Irish Rose at Paramount years ago. And I'm proud to be his son now and then. And some of us know him also as Dr. Christian. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 